Hey, can I call you back later? Okay. Oh. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay, bye. Saturday is the anniversary of releasing All Those Nights, which was a song that I wrote about my mom. We did like a behind the scenes, but it wasn't like a lengthy behind the scenes. And as time went on, I realized that I don't think people really knew what it was about. So I kind of just wanted to share that with people so that they could go watch the video, maybe in a different light. The idea behind the music video was basically just bringing you through the stages of grief that I went through dealing with when my mom died. So like the beginning starts off in my room and if you notice like the time with the alarm it's like going off until 3 p.m. which I don't know many people that sleep until 3 p.m. but <laughs> I was. Um, just the whole idea was like to demonstrate how how uh, messy my room was because that was like also a metaphor for how messy my brain was. And then I move over into the living room and I'm just like throwing pillows everywhere, which there were moments where I would totally just be so upset that I would just like cry on the floor. Um, and then I leave the apartment. The only thing that really got me out of bed was I had to make money to live. I had nowhere to go outside of LA. Like I don't have a house at home. Like my parents died. They didn't leave me anything. So I had to just keep moving. Um, and like truly music is like the only reason I got up. Okay, so in the end of all those nights, we use this guy. Um, that's my mom. That was me. Uh, I think it was senior prom. So I was like 17. I think, oh yeah, these are, this is another one that we used. This was me, Chloe, my sister, and my mom in Florida. Emo's fuck since age five. <laughs> Basically, after my dad died, it was just a hot fucking mess. My mom didn't tell me a lot, which resulted in me not really knowing anything that was going on with her and my sister. And so I just ended up getting a call from the roommate being like, she hasn't paid me rent in X amount of months. I'm kicking her out. I'm putting her stuff on the sidewalk. You can come and get it. And so I just remember looking at my mom being like, all right, I guess this is what we're gonna have to deal with right now. Like pack your shit and put it in your car. And like, I don't know, can you sleep somewhere tonight? And I thought that was gonna be like a month. Like I was like, you know, worst case scenario, she sleeps in her car for a month, which I say it so casually, but it was just like, I had no other option. A month turned into a year. I hadn't heard from her in a few days. Um, she was homeless, and I didn't know where she was sleeping. Um, I had tried over and over asking her where she was, she just wouldn't tell me. I thought that she was just like maybe on like a bender, like drinking. Sometimes she would do that and just not call me. Um, so it was kind of normal to me. I was a little stressed, I felt like this thing in my stomach of like, I don't know, something feels weird. So I ended up calling, it was like on a Saturday, I called her work being like, hey, has my mom shown up? Like, is she, is she there? And they were like, no, she hasn't shown up. So that's when I started getting even more stressed because I was like, that's not like her, she would go to work. The cops called me when I was at work. It was like Tuesday, it was on her birthday, which is on Saturday, which is why we're even shooting this video. Um, and, and he was like, hey, I found your mom. And I was just like, oh my God, fucking thank God. Like I've been trying to like reach her. And he was like, 
Oh, okay. Um, yeah, no, she is, she passed away. Uh, I eventually found out where she was, which is like, she was staying on the street. Um, she was sleeping here. It's, it's clear now, but, uh, when I came, it seemed like it was like a street for a lot of homeless people that were just living out of their car. And it just hit me like a fucking bag of bricks. Like she was around the corner from where I lived this whole time. And she never told me and never asked me for help. And like, so, so once I found that out, that's what I wrote that song about. All those nights that I can't get back, I was like pissed at her. And like, you know, she was trying to get help. And I lost a job over that. Like, I was texting her all the time, uh, trying to help her, trying to find her a place to live. And it just felt like once I found all this out and I found all these like bottles of vodka in her car, it just felt like a big fucking slap in the face. It just sucked to know like all of the shit I was doing was just like totally going in vain. Like she ended up drinking anyway. She was living here anyway. It wasn't like I was just finding out about her dying. It was like I was finding out all these other awful secrets in between. And it was just really, really overwhelming. And I was, I was just pissed. So I wrote that song, like all these nights that, you know, you texted me, you made me stressed and cry. And it was just like a, a stressful year it affected my relationships like it was a lot and in the music video you see like cleaning out the car um which originally we had set up to get her actual car like the well it wasn't her car i actually sold that car but it was a jeep liberty it was silver um that morning the guy didn't answer so we ended up using <laughs> used the director's car which i mean hey it worked you know we did what we needed to do we still got the idea um but if you look closely in the video there's like things that kind of give away that she was sleeping there and honestly when i cleaned it out like it was hard for me to even see because it just it really like punches you in the face like to see like toilet paper on the side of the road is like really fucking hard. <laughs> Help. Oh. oh, sorry, God. You'd think after like four years, it would just not hit me so hard, but oh. It sure does. And we started in the house with me and my depression and then this was just like yet another shot of moving through not only like me having to clean out my mom's car, but it was like cleaning out her secrets of like shit I just didn't even know was happening. Um, and I remember that day, I think I was just was in so much shock. They got, they paid me like a thousand dollars for this car. And then I remember I went home and I just like felt this like really big wave of sadness. Cause I almost felt like that was the last part of her. Cause I had already got her cremated and closed her bank accounts and dealt with her work. And this was like the last step of it all. So, um, I just remember going home and like falling to the floor and just like crying on my floor for a good hour. And I like didn't even really get it, but I think looking back on it, it was just like the, the last thing. Like it, it felt like it was almost over. So. I think doing the music video was like way harder than I thought it was going to be. When you're moving through grief, you think that you already took care of it, like took care of those emotions after it being a year or even like two years. But moving through them in a different way, you soon realize that that is false. So when we did the music video, I had to like, you know, 
dig up all her things again, like the envelope of stuff I didn't actually open for over a year. And so to release it out into the public, it was kind of like telling a secret of like, hey, so I know you guys all thought that I was probably like fine, but I really wasn't for a long time. I guess the end of the video was kind of like a, like a goodbye slash, I don't know, it's, this is so dark, but it's like almost like a burial because we didn't get to have a funeral for her. Like it's, they didn't leave us any money. So I was like, I don't have any money to do this. So I never actually got to have my goodbye like normal people do at those funerals. Um, so shooting this video and like finishing that shot was like, okay, I can not put it to bed, but I can like walk away from it. And, um, and it was almost like a good way of kind of forgiving her too. It's almost like a, a time capsule, like borders. We used to go to borders every Sunday. Like it's got a picture of my sister on here and this like, I don't know. Yeah, it's like all I have left. I mean, there are times where I look at videos before this happened, like before both my parents died, and I wish I could have that happiness again, but I don't think I would change what happened just because I would be so different. And it forced me to wake up in like the most brutal way but it, like i i don't know i just i just appreciate life so much more and i feel like i can have meaningful conversations with people and i know exactly what i want and i, I like the magnitude of how short life is is just so large now so it makes me it just makes me think of life people and my dreams just so differently and like, I don't think people get to feel that way until their 50s or 60s. And I like was lucky enough to figure it out in my 20s. If I do go for my, for my dreams, like I literally have nothing to lose, like nothing. I have this like fuck it energy now because who cares? Like if we're all gonna die anyway, I might as well do what I want to do, like full force and have no regrets. I think that's another thing that made me realize like I cannot live life without music. Like it not only is just something that I love and enjoy, but like it saved my life. Like, so it was the only way that I knew how to like get out of bed and like talk about it and share it.